Hello and welcome to Life on the Edge. So today we're going to look at this uh, little guy sitting in the pouch in front of us here. Um, again, I'm just showing you the packaging because you're getting something a little bit of extra with this knife. So inside the cardboard box is this pouch, the knife inside. Little fur lined pouch, cleaning cloth, couple of decals with Wii knife and Civivi knife uh, websites on them. Let's get that out the way and get this guy out the bag. And then lay him down there while I go through some of the specs and you can have a look at it. Handsome little knife. So this is the Sabivi Dogma uh, liner lock and flipper tab. Nice clip point blade with a fuller running on the top. So that blade is in D2. The scales are brass and then it's got this sort of almost like a beads of rice kind of pattern on it and those are recessed in there so and then as you can see coated in black in there and coated in black along the top of the scales on either side stainless steel liners and then we got a g10 backspacer with a stainless steel deep carry pocket clip and we'll go through some of those things in a little more detail in terms of dimensions of the knife uh, we've got a blade length of 88 millimeters tip to that sort of furthest point, the point of the handle that is closest to the tip. from So from there to there, 88 mils, and that's about 3.46 inches. The thickness of that blade is a 3 mil blade, so nice slender blade, and then it tapers off towards the end from about, let's get the blade so you can see it, tapers off from about there to a very nice fine point, so quite a sort of stabby blade on that. Overall length of the knife is 197 millimeters, so that's about 7.6 inches. And then the width of that handle, excluding the pocket clip, is, and I got it here somewhere, so the thickness, I should say, I keep calling it the width, but the thickness, I see is the correct term, is 12 millimeters, so that's 0.47 inches, and that's for the piece that goes into your pocket, as I said, without the uh, pocket clip. So. Nice size knife, uh, you know, it's um, not, too, not too big, not too bulky. You can see my medium sized hands, I get four fingers on there easily. No jimping on the knife at all, so very kind of elegant, classically styled and designed and shaped knife. Nice finger choil in the front there, and I can get my sort of medium-ish sized fingers comfortably in there. You might struggle a bit if you've got thicker fingers. But it is there. I suppose you can just pull your fingers a little bit back if you've got those chunky sausage fingers. <laughs> just pull it a little bit back. But I'm I'm quite comfortable on there if you um, you know if I need to choke up on that blade. But uh, probably wouldn't even feel the need to do that with this sort of shape of blade. Um, nice grind on the blade as well. So we've got a hollow grind on that. This knife has a little bit of a blemish on it. I see just running on there. I'm not sure if that's just. Try to rub that off. Looks like it could be in the steel. But anyway, nice, nice hollow grind and um, a really neat edge, factory edge on the blade. Came out of the box really sharp. So it's not a, a mirror edge. You don't really see that too often. Every now and again you'll get a blade um, or a specific manufacturer that puts a nice mirror image on, but uh, a mirror edge? Mirror image? <laughs> mirror edge on the blade. Uh, so but still, like I say, very neatly done, very uniform on that edge. A little bit of a detail as well. So on that fuller, you can see that the um, the blade has a sort of, uh, I don't know what you'd call that. Uh, satin. That's the word I'm looking for. Satin. A satin finish on that blade, except for inside that fuller. So you've got a, a nice matte finish in size that fuller so you get a little bit of a um, uh, contrast wow i'm battling with words there a little bit of a contrast on that blade it just adds to the design of it um, looking around the handle really nicely finished off you can see the the scales so those um, brass scales cut back a little bit and that's the liner that's sticking out there with a really neatly done oval lanyard hole nicely integrated into uh, that overall design. Action is really great. It runs on ceramic ball bearings. So very, very smooth and nice sound as well. So really clicky sound. 
satisfying. I will speak about that because, I mean, part of knife ownership for me is the sound of the knife. Um, you know, fiddling with it as much as about the feel of it and the sound. Uh, when, it, when it closes as well, it's got a, a really good detent, so it sucks that blade in there. This is, you can see it sort of pulls it in and it's got a nice little ding sound as it... Nice. Very, very nice. Um, right, so uh, the pocket clip on the back is tip up, as is so often the case with knives nowadays. I did mention that it's got a deep, uh, a deep carry pocket clip, so you know it's got that sort of windy around type design. A little bit of the blade, uh, the, the the back of the handle, I should say, sticks out beyond the clip. So if you put it in your pocket, you're going to get a little bit of that uh, knife sticking out there, but nothing, nothing obnoxious. Um, the nice little touch as well. I like it when, uh, when when they do this. The screws inside there are countersunk, so that's not going to hang up on clothing, and it and it gives you a lot of space to get it over you know a thicker pair of pants or jeans, whatever you're wearing. So and a nice springy clip, not too not too tight, easy to get that onto cloth. So overall. Really nice design, uh, a nice size, smooth, very well finished off. I suppose one complaint could be the fact that it's D2 steel on the blade. But I, you know, I think it's really easy to maintain a D2 blade. You know, a little coat of oil on it every now and again, it's not going to just suddenly start rusting overnight. Uh, especially where, where I live, uh, where the weather is typically dry, I don't have high humidity and it's not near the coast, um, D2 is really not an issue for me. And if you are, if you're in an area of high humidity or you're near the, you're near the sea and you've got salty air, I can say a little bit of oil on that blade every now and again. This is not um, a major effort to maintain uh, D2. And it's a good steel. It's a tough steel. It is a tool steel. Um, easy to work with, easy to sharpen. So I think for this price point, you know, really decent choice in blade steel. The, the other materials are really good. The fact that you've got ceramic ball bearings um, on that, really nice. So the knife is available in a few other options. Uh, you've got a version that uh, instead of the brass, you've got copper. So you'll get that sort of slightly more rose, pinkish uh, um, tone on the, on the handle. On that particular version, though, the blade is also um, black coated. So you've got a black blade on the copper version. You also get one in G10, and then there's a version with a Damascus um, blade steel as well. If you want something a little bit uh, a little bit fancier, I don't think it's um, it's uh, Damascus steel. I'm not sure what Damascus they are using, but again, if you're looking for something that looks uh, a little bit you know more special or, or a little bit more different. The, I have seen that there's a version as well, seen it online, where, the, where instead of the fuller at the back, it's got a little hole cut out in it as well. So there are, like I say, a number of options on the Dogma, and they all are called. So, you know, there's not, there's not a, a name variation. It. They all are the Civivi Dogma. This specific one really uh, did appeal to me, and that's why I grabbed this one for review. Not my knife, by the way. So this knife, again, has been kindly... Uh, provided to me by Blades and Triggers in South Africa. I've mentioned this before, they do have a national footprint here. And this specific one, uh, the guys uh, have helped me out from Blades and Triggers in Eastgate. Mentioned this before, great bunch of guys. If you are looking for a knife here in South Africa, and this is in the Joburg area, by the way, pop in there. They've got a really nice sele selection of knives. They know their stuff and they are, as I say, uh, great hanging around there. Good bunch of guys, wacky bunch of guys, uh, but very helpful and knowledgeable. So there it is. In terms of price for the knife, uh, 2145 Let's try that again as he stumbles. Let's uh, say that slowly. 2,185 Rand in South Africa. Uh, and I've seen it on Blade HQ for $67. So reasonably priced, very good quality, well-finished, robust knife. Let's do a little bit of size comparisons on this guy. And I'm going to use my usual suspects. I still do not. I feel like I keep apologizing for this. I still do not have my Ontario Rat. And I'm only saying that because it seems to be the knife that's most commonly used for size comparisons. A knife that everybody knows, that. Or, uh, or the Spyderco Delica. I don't have that knife as well. But my rat is on the way. 
people, it is on the way. And soon I will stop apologizing. So I use this guy. I think it's a knife that uh, a lot of people know as well and um, have seen or is available to them um, at their local shop if they want to do comparisons. Or um, And that is uh, that guy, the Spyderco Manix 2. You can see that in this particular case, these two knives are very, very, very similar size. The uh, Spyderco 2 um, wider in that that dimension, sort of top to bottom dimension, um, but lengthwise very similar and widthwise very similar. This, the Manix 2 is a bit heavier, and we've got, oh, and that actually, I haven't spoken about the weight. We're going to weigh this guy right now. Um, so the Manix 2 a little bit wider, but, you know, that's to do with materials. This specific one is 154 cm, but you've got that sort of stainless steel insert in there, which is necessary for the, um, what do we call that again? The... Uh, access lock <laughs> got there eventually right so that's the comparison of that the other one I've been using is uh, the Medford and that went missing on a couple of videos I found it again so the Medford Slim Midi again another knife that is very very similar in size uh, in fact similar thickness as well so you know if that knife appeals to you from an EDC from a size perspective this will as well but obviously at a much lower price point because of the materials um, used and then the last one I always use is the uh, I always forget the name of Benchmade my Benchmade I love it the fact that I know my own knife Benchmade uh, and this is the Barrage the Mini Barrage uh, I think I failed to mention that in a few videos so that's the Mini Barrage my hands are not that big and there you go just to get a sense of that and then oh, while I'm about it, actually this is probably an object that a lot of people know and I just haven't seen this lying on my desk. So this is the uh, Parker Jotter. Uh, let's just pop that in there. It's, as I say, it's probably something that people really know or are familiar with. So yeah, gives you a little bit of a size. And then, um, and then I said I was going to check. I did write down the weight here somewhere. But let's, my scale's right Yeah. So let's just pop this on the scale quickly and check what we've got here it is it is a little bit of a weighty knife um, and it's you know the, the brass the brass does add um, a little bit of weight to that um, so let's have a look what we got here so that's I got five ounces and uh, for those in the rest of the world um, that is 141 grams for that knife there we go so not the lightest guy out but um yeah perfectly manageable speaking of the weight i'd see that they have done a little bit of um material removal to get it a little bit lighter and let's see if we can catch it probably can just see in there that it has been mulled out on the scales you can see sort of these triangular shapes uh running into there we go you can see it on the inside there just to make the knife slightly lighter and then um, nothing on the, oh, I say nothing, and there actually is. There's a little oval, I don't know if you're going to pick that up there. A little oval that's been mulled and removed there, the smallest little piece. Hmm. Okay, there it is. Oh, and the other thing I didn't mention. Wow, I'm forgetting a lot of things tonight. Uh, right hand, not right hand tip up uh, carry, it is tip up carry, but it is reversible. So you've got a, a slight recess in the scale there, and you can see the extra hole. So it's a case of uh, removing it, flipping it onto that side, and then the top screw on either on either side um, of the scale. So the, the the screw closest to the edge is then has the dual function of of fastening the pocket clip and holding on the scale. Right now, I think I've mentioned everything. <laughs> except for the little CVV logo, which CVV commonly does, as does we, um, on the pivot there. So all in all, nice knife. I think good value for money. Beautifully finished. Feels good in hand. There it is. Guys, thanks so much. Once again, if you've stuck through all my rambling, I appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe if you haven't help me grow this channel, I would really appreciate it. And once again, thanks for stopping by and God bless.